with another slow fashion video. This week, I am going through all of the little styling tips and tricks to really just level up your outfit game and make it look a little bit more put together and intentional. Uh, without, as always, shopping or feeling like you need to run out and buy things you probably actually don't need. So for those of you who are new, welcome. Every week I talk about slow fashion with a heavy focus on the principles of using and loving what you already have and making smart shopping decisions so that you can create a closet full of pieces that you actually love and wear. So if that sounds like your jam, hit subscribe below. I post every Sunday. And for those of you who are coming back, big hello and welcome back. Thank you so, so much for coming back and watching. It really means the world. And before we jump in, actually, I should let you know I have a little bit of a lookbook with comparisons of the different, like, looks that are basic and looks that have been, um, you know, zhuzhed up a little. So now we can jump in. The first step when I build my outfit is I decide on my base, whether or not I'm going to wear either a dress or a jumpsuit or separates. I think when it comes to dressing for the fall and colder weather, however, that it is important to think of your base also in terms of hosiery. You should decide from the get-go if you want to incorporate a tight or a lighter legging underneath your look, uh, especially because they're right on trend this season and you probably have a bunch, you know, hiding at the back of your underwear drawer. I should also say that at this stage when you're determining your base, you want to look at, of course, the very obvious things that will determine your day, like what's on your agenda, where are you going to be going, the weather, and also a little bit more of your mood. I think in the summer, it's mostly just about trying to stay cool and chic, but in the fall, we have a little bit more wiggle room. Now comes the fun part. <coughs> Styling up your base. There are so, so many ways that you can just zhuzh up a basic sweater and jeans, for example. And the first thing is to roll and cuff. And you can do this on both whatever you're wearing on top and your pants if you've chosen to wear a pair of pants or a jumpsuit that day. If you're wearing a shirt, you can definitely cuff your sleeves and you can also start rolling up your sweater sleeves if you like. And I find in the fall, this is really good, especially if you have a really cool watch that you want to show off or a couple of bracelets. There are so many ways that you can cuff and roll your pants. I actually delved a little bit deeper into this topic in a video that I will post a link, I mean, up here. What's really important to remember when you are cuffing your pants is that if you are on the more petite side and you want to make yourself look taller, I would recommend a very small cuff or perhaps a little bit more of a pin roll at the ankle. This means that you're still showing off your ankle, which has a really nice elongating effect, but it's not exaggerating the bottom half of your body and making you look even shorter because there's a big block of, you know, a different colored fabric at your ankle. your sweaters and shirts can work really really well to add a more polished vibe and more intentional feeling to your look which is I think half the battle to making you look more chic and pulled together than you actually feel and I find for the colder temperature it's also a little bit more practical there's more material closer to your body it makes you feel a little bit more like tucked in and cozy how you tuck in your shirt or your sweater is going to depend on the style mood that you're going for that day as well as your body type I know it's not easy for all of us to tuck in our sweaters and shirts all the way in however I do dive deeper into this topic in a video I actually spend nine minutes talking about how to tuck in a sweater believe it or not um, so I will link it up there I can't believe I didn't lead with this one swap out your shoes in the fall it is so easy to just throw on your easy pair of sneakers or rain boots on a day where it's not even actually raining because they're like the easiest thing to get your feet into but I would recommend being a little bit more pragmatic and thoughtful in your approach to building your outfit by choosing a pair of shoes that perhaps is a little bit more dressy and again, intentional looking. knee-high boots are back on trend so if you have an old pair of knee highs that you haven't worn because ankle booties were all the rage then pull out those knee-high boots and throw those on layering in the fall doesn't have to be complicated I like to start with a very thin base layer so that I don't feel uncomfortable as I'm adding more layers or for example you could start layering your outerwear like adding a faux fur vest on top of your denim jacket Think of 
layering in terms of just adding a beautiful scarf. If you don't like layering too much on your top half, layering can also apply, God, how many times have I said layering so far? Jeez, layering, oh God, there it is again. You could perhaps layer a pair of tights underneath a shorter skirt, underneath a dress. You could even take a pair of beautiful thin trouser socks and throw those underneath a pair of cropped ankle pants. Finally, adding texture is another little styling tweak that works beautifully in the fall because we have this great injection of rich textures like fuzzy wools and tweed. In addition to simply adding a textured piece to a whole look, you can also combine textures if you wanna go really wild. Uh, Karen Britchick does this absolutely beautifully. The world of fall dressing is your oyster. It's just a matter of keeping all of these little styling tweaks in mind as you put together your outfit. Now, I'm not saying that you have to use all of these styling tweaks, but I do find that as I'm building my outfit, trying to incorporate at least two of them is really helpful in creating a look that feels a lot more thoughtful and therefore comes across as just looking a little bit more luxe. The final step is accessorizing and I think even for people who prefer a more minimal and understated look can still do really well by adding a couple of key accessories to their fall looks. The key accessory for me however in the fall and winter months is the belt. We tend to gravitate towards heavier materials, heavier textures, darker colors in the fall, and belts can really balance out these heavier textures and colors in a way that is very simple and doesn't detract from your overall look. Belts are also a great way to highlight a figure when you might be feeling a little bit like the Michelin Man because you've added all these layers or a big chunky sweater that's keeping you warm. But it's nice to let the world know that you still have a body under all of those things. So a belt can do that really well, especially if you get it in a color that contrasts with the rest of your look. When it comes to jewelry, I think the fall and cooler seasons are the best time to break out your heftier, more statement pieces. And that's because I find our delicate jewelry tends to get lost in these, you know, thick gauge sweaters or richer fabrics. Sunglasses are another great accessory that we tend to accumulate over time and can really make an outfit feel fresh again by wearing a pair that maybe we haven't worn in a while. Scarves are the next obvious choice for accessories. I've also done a video about how to style scarves, depending on what kind of outerwear you're wearing so I will link that up here. Again I tend to talk for a very long time about a subject that seems so trivial but there you have it. liked it, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back next week with another slow fashion video. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful week ahead. Ciao!